Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. One month after this catastrophic and deadly flooding damaged roads and destroyed homes and even delayed schools, help is on the way. Thanks for joining us here for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Today, the feds approve funding for homeowners and business owners. Fox 61's Alexa Farrell is in Southbury. So, Alexa, what happens next? So next, there will be boots on the ground here in Southbury and in some of the surrounding towns. And there's finally a bit of hope on the horizon for people that were so devastated by this one in 1,000 year storm. Uh, much devastation in the area. People owing a lot of money now to fix their homes and that relief is coming. That's because today Governor Lamont was very excited to announce that this federal was uh, this area was declared a federal disaster area. So that will allow the money from FEMA to come through. So it's going to help affected individuals in Fairfield County, Litchfield County and New Haven County. And that's going to be assistance in the form of grants for temporary housing and home repairs, as well as low cost loans to cover uninsured property losses and other programs to help individuals and business owners as well recover from the damages of that disaster. So now starts that approval process. So they're going to register. People will register. Then FEMA will come in and Respect the property so they can determine what they can pay for. Homeowners and businesses should see money in about two weeks or so. That two week period really going to be that golden spot and then moving forward money will be coming in. There will be two disaster recovery centers set up as well as two centers set up by the Small Business Administration to help people through this process. Officials say it's really important to collect your receipts, have the proof of the damage really ran uh, head, um, handy and ready ready to go so that you can show what happened during the storm to you. And about $42,500 is what homeowners, that max amount for homeowners, and $42,500 for separate needs as well. Take a listen to what um, the officials had to say today. The destructive force of climate change should not be underrated. And when we build back, it has to be on our minds that building back better with resilience has to be a resolve. We need to do it. And that's why we have these programs that Congress has funded and Connecticut should take advantage of them. So they're saying, of course, you have to show the proof for the damage and what was lost in this storm. But how you rebuild, you can do it better. You can build back better so that that doesn't happen again. Of course, climate change, they're saying, is a real thing. And this could continue to happen in the future for something to look out for. In South Perry, Alexa Farrell, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Alexa. Well, right now we're keeping an eye on the shoreline where there could be some storm surge overnight. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frame joining us now. Rach, uh, what do people need to know? I think if you park your car in an area that floods a few times a year, don't park your car there tonight before you go to bed. Make sure you're moving it to a spot of higher ground. There is the potential for minor coastal flooding while we sleep, but also during both high tide cycles during the day on Saturday as well. So make sure if you see this at all during the day on Saturday that you're following detours, allowing some extra time to get to your destination. Again, this is just along the immediate shoreline for those areas that typically get inundated. And of course, don't drive through any flooded roadways. The next high tide for the New Haven area is at two o'clock in the morning. So luckily that's during a time that not a lot of people are out and about and high tide in New London is just about midnight tonight. And then again, we'll have to watch those high tide cycles tomorrow. We don't anticipate any damage damage from this, but it's because of this big offshore storm. It's been raining all day today off and on in Boston and also even some showers there for Rhode Island and got as close to us as Mystic and Stonington. And there is a chance that a little bit of this moisture comes closer to us tomorrow with a few showers possible in far eastern Connecticut. But most of us stay dry. In fact, I think tomorrow is a very similar day to today. Overnight lows in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees heading through the day tomorrow. We're going to start the day off with mostly cloudy skies. If not cloudy skies, we'll see highs only in the 60s and we'll take a closer look at who has the best chance of seeing a few showers plus some Sunday improvement coming up. 
All right, Rachel, thank you. We're continuing to follow developing news out of West Haven, where a New Haven man is uh, dead after being shot by officers last night. Yeah, this happened during a police investigation. It splashed car wash on the Boston Post Road. That's where we find Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc joining us now. Julia. The car wash has been closed all day after we saw workers cleaning up what was left of the crime scene Friday morning. In the meantime, we spoke with witnesses who either saw or heard some of what happened here. Shots fired in West Haven, so it's 1 in 67. The car wash next to Dunkin' Donuts on Orange. Thursday night, just after 5 o'clock. We don't need any cars coming in. We're going to try to get all these cars out of here. In all hands on deck situation on the Boston Post Road in West Haven. They gave me cruisers to the entrance of the car wash. Surveillance video from a nearby store capturing the response on camera. Starting with an investigation at Splash Car Wash led by officers from the State Police Violent Crimes Task Force and the New Haven Police Criminal Intel Unit. At one point, shots rang out. I had a couple shots. Like someone is shooting somebody like something. Santi Diaz was at his restaurant nearby, sitting in his office with a window overlooking the back of the car wash. Tried to look to the window, but I decided not to because, I don't know, maybe something happened in the back. I don't want to be in the middle. Police say the suspect they were surveillancing displayed a gun, which prompted a state police sergeant and a New Haven police officer to shoot, injuring and eventually killing the 36-year-old New Haven man. About half hour, we were sitting there watching everything. Rafael Roman and Tito Rodriguez were stuck in their car in the busy intersection as officers cleared the area. First it started like four or five cops, then we saw detectives come, but they were just, they were just rushing into the scene. The officer is walking away uninjured but not unaffected. New Haven Police Chief Carl Jacobson speaking on their response Thursday night. This shows you what happens in violent situations. Our officers do the best job they can do to not do this. Um, and I just left them, and clearly they're upset, but uh, it's unfortunate. An impact neighbors can feel, too. Well, yes, of course. We're always going to be thinking about what happened. You know, when something like that happened, it always stay a little, you know, you always have a little feeling. The investigation is now in the hands of the Office of the Inspector General, which by state law is required to release the video from the body-worn cameras of the officers within 96 hours of the incident. At that time, we're also expected to learn the names of the officers and the man who was killed. We are in West Haven. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Julia. Well, a warning for parents tonight. Be careful what your kids repost on social media. Meriden police are investigating two school threats found online. Police say both investigations involve kids reposting threats. Two young people were arrested in one of those investigations yesterday, but police are still looking into the other one. They say they've identified a young person who may be involved. Meriden schools had extra officers patrolling today. Well, new tonight, Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal and Governor Ned Lamont met with students to talk about online dangers and how to regulate social media. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolforce was there for that conversation. She joins us now in studio. Emma. Sarah, Bren, these New Haven middle schoolers say they've experienced the harms of social media firsthand and want lawmakers on Capitol Hill to think about them. I find like the reels and like the TikTok so funny, especially like what some of the newer trends are funny and like some of the dances, they're like goofy and funny to learn. Like many of her friends, New Haven middle schooler Natalie Yanoa Martinez loves TikTok and Instagram. I get a lot of off inspiration basketball clips, like just different stuff like that, and dances, dancing videos too. But she and her peers say there's a dark side to social media apps too. Fights, like people doing like harmful stuff to people, like stabbing and stuff. People come like at people's races. It's just stupid, cause like you're really blowing up off of negative stuff and not positive stuff. That's why Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal is trying to pass a new measure he says would make social media apps safer for kids. The social media company they said to us, trust us, we'll take care of it, we'll protect the kids. And they didn't do it. Why? Because the way they make money is just attracting more kids for more hours 
to more of the apps. He says the Kids Online Safety Act would empower young people and parents with the tools and safeguards needed to protect themselves online while also holding big tech accountable for harms to kids. Imposing an obligation on those big companies that have the billions of dollars means maybe they'll be a little more responsible and young people themselves really want to take back their own lives. These students believe more protections would not only keep them safer, but make the online experience a more positive one. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm gonna get bullied on the app, this and that, becoming like a space you can feel comfortable in and stuff. And the Kids Online Safety Act passed the Senate with a 91 to 3 vote back in July. And just this Wednesday, it passed out of committee in the House. Blumenthal tells me he's seeing bipartisan support in the House, hoping the bill will be brought for a vote in the next week. If not, he believes it can pass in the two months following the November election. So hopeful it will be passed sometime before the end of this year. Sarah Brent. All right, Emma, thank you. A Fox 61 follow-up now. A meeting to discuss removing South Windsor's mayor from office has been canceled. Council members told us Mayor Audrey Delnicki's leadership style is not in the town's best interest. Some even called her a bully, but Delnicki told us she's not going anywhere. She said she is blunt, but she tries to bring order to the chaos of council meetings. At this time, we don't know when the meeting will be rescheduled.